Good day everyone! We are The Last Group and welcome to our presentation. So in this video, we're going to talk about another sacrament which is the healing of the sick. As you have noticed, all the other sacraments have healing in some way. Like for example, marriage heals self-centeredness, confirmation heals the fear of witnessing to Christ, and reconciliation or penance heals our sinfulness. This particular sacrament that we are going to talk about, which is the anointing of the sick, is healing in a special sense because it brings Christ's special, loving, compassionate healing to bear to those who are feeling or to those who are suffering from serious sickness. So by healing, we do not necessarily mean the cure of the disease or defect, which is what the medical profession pursues. While some diseases or evil may be incurable in the medical sense, there can be healing by holistic care. So when we say holistic care, it is when you are touched in your body, your soul, and your spirit, or when the soul, the body, and the spirit of the sick person is touched. So with that in mind, healing then means the process by which a person is helped to realize their full potential before God and their fellow men and women. The good news is primarily about healing and not just about cure in the current medical sense. Basically, this is what we are going to talk about in this video and we are going to learn about the anointing of the sick, the sacrament anointing of the sick, bit by bit until we learn its effect. Why is it important? First, this provides physical and or spiritual healing according to God's will. Second, the sick person may prepare for death, which then pours out consolation and hope. And lastly, it gives the very ill person the sacrament of reconciliation. Sacrament of reconciliation is one of the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church in which the faithful are absolved from sins committed after baptism and they are reconciled with the Christian community. Sickness and sin. It says here that serious sickness and pain bring us the threat of death and sin show the power of evil. For me, God heals not only our physical sickness, but as a whole body, soul, and spirit. The physical sickness in human being tells us about how do evil works. Through sickness, we became weak, and we may have the chance to live in despair and prevent, and prevent us to work or aim for goodness. But because of God's great love, we are healed from that sickness. For example, when you smoke, that sin, right? So if you always smoke, you will get sick, knowing that smoking is not right. Drinking alcohol, the effect is that you are drunk. So when you are drunk, you no longer know what you are doing. So in this lesson, it reminds us that we should be responsible to our body. We should be matured. We must stop our vices and sins so that we do not get sick because we are all children of God to share the good deeds that our Lord does. So for me, we should pray every day and we pray for those who are sick because prayer is for healing, love and act of service to our neighbor. So kini, para sa kuwan nagpasabot kini nga ang sakit mao'y nakapaluya sa lawas, ug ang sala mao'y nakapaluya sa soul ug ang spirit. So buot ipasabot ni ini ang pag-ayon ni Hesus sa tawo dili lang pagwagtang sa physical na sakit, kundi dili holistic. So, mao kini ang akong topic sa sickness and sin. Thank you. Talk about sin, sickness and sin. We're going to proceed with our next topic, which is how Christians react towards sickness. Or basically, we're going to talk about Christian attitude to sickness. There are actually three main points, and we're going to talk about each of them one by one. So, first things first. Christians usually associate or correlate sickness as, as a plan laid out by God's providence that we should all struggle against sickness and carefully seek the blessings of good health so that we can fulfill our role in human society and in the church. So as you can notice, this uh, particular phenomenon usually happens in our family. Like, for example, when someone gets sick, sick we usually tend to um, become much more closer to God because we pray and ask for guidance and ask for good health and also pray for the sick person to be healed. So in that way, 
um, we become much more closer and our faith is become uh, our faith becomes more strengthened. We basically seek the blessings of good health when we pray to God and when we ask for His guidance. So in that way, we usually correlate it as a plan laid out by God. Secondly, Christians do realize that sickness is a sign not of personal or particular sin, but rather a sign of the oppressive presence of evil in our human situation. So when we say that it is not of your personal sin, but rather the oppressive presence of the evil, we mean that it does not mean that when you commit sin, then you become sick. It is because of the sin that you have committed. It does not work that way. So when sickness does occur, it is because the presence of the evil, evil in our human situation. To proceed with our third point, uh, Christians do believe that when someone is seriously sick or ser- seriously ill, they need the special help of God. They need the special help of God's grace because they may be broken in spirit and they may fall into temptations easily, which, may, which will be able to also weaken their faith. Basically, when someone is sick, they may be broken in spirit and their relationship toward, towards God may be not that strong. Lastly, when we join our sufferings with Christ, our sufferings, all the sickness, hardships, can take on creative, saving, and transforming meaning and value. So basically, when someone is sick, and when they share their suffering, when they share their sickness, and when they pray and ask for God's help, those suffering will be of meaning and value. That is why it is very important to seek God whenever there is sickness and suffering. So that would be all about Christian attitude to sickness. We have Christ as the physician. Jesus came to redeem us from all evil and thus inaugurate the kingdom of God. By forgiving sin and healing the sick and infirm, Jesus showed that God had visited his people and the reign of God was at hand. Jesus did not perform some sort of divine magic, nor did he intend to take the place of all doctors and nurses by wiping out all sickness. The real importance of the body cures then was to act as signs of the more radical healing over sin and health the salvation of the whole person, and concretely, these healings involve faith in Jesus and following Him in loving obedience to God the Father. Hello everyone, at this point we will talk about the Healing Church. In his parable of the Good Samaritan and his description of the Last Judgment, Christ portrayed care for the sick and infirm as a basic corporal work of mercy and a norm for judging our very salvation. He even identified himself with the sick. In quote, I was ill and you comforted me, in prison and you come to visit me. Thus, within the church, while some have received a special charisma of feeling from the Holy Spirit, all are called to visit the sick and care for them. So Jesus thought this care for the sick to all who would follow him and form his church. In his parable of the Good Samaritan from Luke chapter 10 verses 29 to 37 and his description of the last judgment, Christ portrayed care for the sick and infirm as a basic corporal work of mercy and a norm for judging our very salvation. He even identified himself with the sick. I was ill and you comforted me in prison and you come to visit me. It is found in Matthew chapter 25 verse 36. Thus, within the church, while some have received special, special tourism of healing from the Holy Spirit, all are called to visit the sick and cure for them. Jesus passed on this ministry of healing to his apostles in a particular form. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them. They anointed the sick with oil and worked many cures. It is found in Mark chapter 6 verses 7 to 13. The reason Christ promised the eleven that the sick upon whom they laid their hands would recover. The church fashioned the sacrament of anointing from this text from James chapter 5 verses 14 to 15. This was used by Vatican to revise and renew the rite of the sacrament of anointing. So first, since the sacrament is for baptized Christians 
who are sick, not only for those who are at the point of death, its name is changed from extreme unction to anointing of the sick. The revised ritual makes a clear distinction between pastoral care of the sick, climaxed in the anointing of the sick and of the dying, which focuses in viaticum or the Eucharist with you on the way to the next life. Talk about the revision and renewal of the rite of the sacrament of anointing. First, since the sacrament is for baptized Christians who are sick, not only for those who are at the point of death, its name is changed from extreme unction to anointing of the sick. Second, the ministers of the sacrament are not the charismatic healers, but the priests, the elders whose authority assures the community solidarity and unity. They can, therefore, act in the name of the whole community. Third, the sacrament heals not through any magic or natural medicinal causes, but through the prayer of faith and anointing of the name in the name of the Lord. Like the other sacraments, the anointing of the sick celebrates the Paschal mystery of Christ and incorporates those celebrating the sacrament more deeply into Christ's mystery. Lastly, practical-minded Filipino Catholics are often tempted to judge that the sacrament worked if the sick person got better or failed if not. But this is a serious misunderstanding of the sacrament. The sacrament's healing is the total personal healing, a saving and raising up to the whole person. No amount of sickness, pain, suffering, and death itself can shake our confident faith that our ultimate healing is assured in Christ Jesus. Celebration of the sacrament. So after the initial greeting and the penitential rite similar to the one used in the church, the sacrament consists of three actions. First is the First is the prayer of faith, second is the laying on of hands, and third is the anointing with oil. So this prayer of the prayer of faith, it, it is when the community, the people of God represented by the priest, the family, friends, and loved ones prays for the anointing. So the second one, the laying on of hands, it is when imitating Je Jesus' own gesture of healing, and invoking the coming of Holy Spirit who brings the blessings of God's healing grace upon the sick person. Lastly, the third is the anointing with oil made holy by God's blessing signifying the, and the strengthening and healing that comes from the Spirit. Anointing the forehead and hands of the sick, the priest will say, Through this holy anointing, may the Lord in His love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord who frees you from sin, save you and rise you up. Amen. Now let us talk about the effects of the sacrament. According to Catholic doctrine, the anointing of the sick affects the sick person in the following ways. It provides courage, strength and peace in the face of illness. It helps the sick person to trust in God no matter what happens. It gives the sick person grace to unite his or her suffering to the passion of Christ. It provides physical and or spiritual healing according to God's will. It offers necessary graces so that the sick person may prepare for death. It pours out consolation and hope. It provides an opportunity for the forgiveness of sins even when the sick person is too ill to receive the sacrament of reconciliation. These effects are brought about by uniting the sick person with the passion and death of the primordial sacrament, Christ the Healer.